So here we are in Wargame Red Dragon, and I thought I'd do a quick primer for how the skirmish mode works so people are prepared for when they go into multiplayer. Uh, so you start off with a certain amount of points which is shared between the number of players, in this case it's just me versus the computer, so we, all, we have the full amount of points, about 2000. You always have to have one command uh, out, so you'll never have the full points, and if you wanted to swap it to a different command, you have to have the points to put the other command down before you delete it. So as you watch, you see you have a number of points, you spend it to take out this unit which is here. This is its veterancy, this is its cost, and this is how many you're, you're taking and how many there are. So, it's an ASLAV command. So, it's important in this game to have supply, and the forward operating base provides you with the largest quantity of supply. I think for points it is the best. Uh, and obviously it's static however, so you need something to ferry the supply, or you need to take the thing which needs supply back to it. This is just a land map, so this is just going to be a discussion of the normal land tactics. I'll do a naval one afterwards, I think. So, you can see there's a series of sectors, and they're given different values. So, a plus four sector is worth four times as much as the plus one sector in terms of command, roughly speaking. And, uh, as you can see, there's also these arrows. So, land is where land units can come on. So, you can bring on land units anywhere you control a sector which says has a land arrow going onto it and air is a sector where aircraft can, can come on so for example if we only had alpha we could only bring land units on we wouldn't be able to bring any of these aircraft on so obviously it's best to try and secure as many sectors as you can most of the time so we're going to send a command to each sector so if you have a command static and the enemy does not have a command uh, in the sector then you will capture it Now it's a game where you need a balance of units, so for example infantry are very effective in these town regions but very ineffective in a field. And you can have a variety of different types, so we have the special forces who we can send ahead, so that's what we will do. And quite often you'll see this, people fly special forces forward if they don't fly an entire force forward. In this deck I don't have loads of aircraft, loads of helicopter units, so I can't just fly them in. So we have some anti-air, some anti-tank missile then just some standard infantry. As a rule of thumb it's actually better to bring the elite infantry than it is to bring this regular infantry but because this is a skirmish with the AI that won't be a problem. So we'll do the same with the other one. As you can see I can put down several in a row by holding down shift and uh, selecting them. Wait a second. Command here, command here, command here. Don't need this command. Okay. So, fusiliers. Oh. I'm out of them. I guess I have to put some Royal Marines on after all. Okay. So, you've also got your tanks, which provide the muscle for your force. Uh, and they're more effective if you can conceal them or if you have a very large force trying to force its way through to the enemy. Critical to the game of course is that you should always bring some recon to find the enemy and generally it's good to have both some air superiority and some bombers although they are expensive. And then when it comes to actually defending against aircraft it's best to have a radar anti-air further back some sort of infrared missiles a bit further forward or guided missiles and then like your AAA sort of machine gun weapons ahead of that and you don't want them put close together and after they fire you normally want to move them so that the enemy doesn't uh, just artillery them so let's get started take a look and see how good or bad the AI is while we're at it it might just uh, annihilate me who knows but we'll find out Normally the AI makes uh, fairly basic mistakes which lets you get away with their slightly superior reactions. So using the move fast command gets the units to head along the roads towards the objective. Which is the quickest way for them to move but obviously makes them predictable and easy to hit with a mass force of uh, bombers or artillery. So I'm sending a plane ahead just in case they've sent some planes. It doesn't look like they have. Which is good for us. Oh, there's, there's an enemy helicopter. Oh, they got some anti-air. So you can evac your planes early. Obviously, that's also a threat to my uh, 
by helicopters as well. We want to get this infantry into the town if we can before they can hit us. There we go. The anti air guys should have a good effect. Though this command is going to be a bit exposed, so we'll just hide it behind the buildings because line of sight is a factor in war game. So they won't be able to see it unless they get lined up. Because this is a points game where the destruction of enemy units uh, leads towards your victory, it's generally a good idea to send the transport vehicles back. Unless they actually have weapons which can assist, of course. So like a little machine gun on an uh, APC generally doesn't help very much in my experience. So you've got here, you can see that I can see that they have some of these anti-air APCs, but I can't tell what these units are and that's because my recon cannot see well enough. For now we'll just move back. Look in the town, you see one unit can occupy one of these grid marked squares in the town. So we're going to bring a bigger tank and we'll also bring some ATGM if we can. Get a helicopter on. Well, actually, it's probably not a good idea because actually they have a lot of massed anti air in that force. We'll try and get some more marines forwards. So you'll see the A to GM rapidly eats up your uh, supply. So you need to send in a supply vehicle like this Chinook to deal with them. Oh, you see, they've sent in their planes. I probably won't react fast enough, but we'll have a go. I haven't got a lot of anti-air, so that's already a flaw in my defence. So I'll show you what I mean about these guys. So you see I'll put a AAA in front of this one. Then hopefully the AAA will stun the enemy uh, planes and then the anti-air missiles will take them out. That's the reasoning. So some napalm being used here to destroy my infantry, effectively, unfortunately. order some more infantry forwards. The marines are more expensive but the more elite a unit is the better its accuracy, uh, the harder it is to stun for a long time. Factors like that help a lot. So a unit like the SAS is actually very effective. Should be able to take out one of these for example if it gets line of sight. And because it has a good combination of both heat and infrared uh, it can kill a lot of units if given the chance. Our reinforcements have to come all the way from this land position though, which is not ideal. I've forgotten to deploy that, so because that command is an infantry command, and because it was in a vehicle, it doesn't actually control the sector until you deploy it. It's an important thing to remember. Now, I'm not sending in my bomber planes, because I know they have a lot of anti-air, so it's just suicide. And planes are worth a lot of points, and that will count a lot towards your victory. So we control about just over half the map, which is good. It means that we have the advantage at the moment. Which means that we can afford to, to fight over here. The challenge is a heavy tank. They're pretty, pretty extremely effective, to be honest. But they're much more expensive than your medium and light tanks. So it's good to have a balance between the two. You might think having a lot of the best unit is, is the answer, but in most cases that's actually not the case. So if you take a look at the... oops, put down two there. If you take a look at the weapons, if we look at this rapier, for example. You'll see that, I was going to try and point out, it's a AOE fire and forget static, so it's not a radar, and so it's not vulnerable to see their aircraft. So therefore you can put that slightly further forward than you otherwise would. Let's see if we have any... I don't think I actually have any radar ones in this force. I think it's because we can get these ADATs, and the ADATs are just fantastic. I love the ADATs. Although the British now get the Stormer, which is similar. A bit less range, I suppose. We need to supply the SAS over here. Could bring on some more. So helicopters will get from the front faster, they can fly over these obstacles, just land. 
but they are more expensive and they are vulnerable to anti-air fire. So when your supply vehicle runs out, so this is down to 172 out of 1,500, you can just bring it back to the forward operating base. Supply helicopters will automatically land if they can. A normal helicopter, if you want to repair it, you'd have to fly it back and command it to land, which is an important uh, thing to remember. They are working their way through here, actually. We do need to get some more reinforcements to the front soon. We are winning the game though, I think. 6,000 points though, so it would take a long time. So the recon gives you a certain amount of range where you can see things. The better the optics, the more the further you'll be able to see and the more likely you are to identify things. So we've been driven out of this town by this sort of mass infantry. It's to be expected. We will do something about it. Soon enough. So I'm up against actually one of my own decks because now you can give the uh, computer um, a deck and it will play with the deck that you provide it. So in this case it's playing with my, uh, I think my Cat C uh, North Korea deck, so it's old units, very cheap, lots of them. It's actually pretty good against what I've got. You see they're firing artillery from back here somewhere. So what we can do to deal with artillery is we bring on our own artillery unit. Then we can try counter battery it. We've got some anti air finally arriving. But to keep any missile unit, you need to have a lot of supply, and that's why I provide lots of cargo and uh, cargo trucks and supply helicopters just to keep them firing. If a unit's got like a normal cannon, uh, generally it lasts a lot longer. Not always. Contact. Oops. Trouble. Could order some more marines towards the town to drive them a little bit further back. As long as we keep them bogged down with our superior infantry, we'll actually win in, on balance of points. Now a human player will probably just pick off our, our recon which we push forward here. Even a plane can do the job. And that's quite, quite a good idea because if I can't see what's coming then uh, he could take it by surprise. I could have sent in my uh, bomber early and then all those anti-air strellers would have just shot it down instantly. So you see this symbol here, this means the units ru run out of ammo so you can no longer destroy these tanks unfortunately. There's really not much we can do about that. What we should do however is get this unit into the town. If it's in the open they'll be absolutely decimated by these guys. Get some cheap helicopters out to slow them down. You've got a, quite a large line here. So you see this clustering here against a human player. You want to keep them even more spread out than this. A clustered unit will be easily taken out by artillery. Speaking of which, you can spot when artillery fires. There'll be a flash. So if we get the chance, we're going to try and fire back at the artillery. I think we destroyed a command there, judging from the points cost. Now it is possible to send like amphibious vehicles out into the water and round, but I know he has something here, which is probably going to pick them off. Just moving that command out of the front line of the forest. So as long as it's inside this and they don't have a command, we'll control the sector. Generally you should try and put your command somewhere not too predictable. A human player was much more likely to guess than the computer, and uh, now they've got rid of that, gotten rid of that problem where the computer would just know where everything was in advance. No human player would just drive ATGM straight into your units, of course. But this is quite a cool unit with its strellas, uh, I do like them. Archinoch has kept keeping us well supplied, so it's a plus. I think we lost the other one, somehow. So they can only fire at ATGM at vehicles. So sometimes if your APCs come under fire from missiles, it's worth just dropping your infantry out so they survive and can walk forwards. What is it you 
Where is artillery firing from? I think back here, looks like. It's always a good idea to counter fire if you can, because artillery are worth a lot of points, and if you stop them using the artillery, it makes a big difference. So you can hotkey your units with uh, control and then the number. We're in a combat zone right now. The odds of hitting are relatively low, this sort of range, without any spotting. But you can get lucky, and normally artillery aren't very well armoured, which means they can be taken out very easily. So got, they got some recon helicopters here. I could try and take them out, but I know he has lots of anti-air units. We're ready to bring the hammer down on them, sir. We could use artillery on this middle road, where the enemy are going through. You can see, because I can see the area, the actual dispersion of the shot has been narrowed a great deal. This SAS unit is running out of uh, ammo quite fast. Trouble. Now normally you would move your artillery every time it fires, but in this case I'm just leaving it there. Oh, they, they have come for this guy in the end. I don't know what with. Not something hugely effective, but it's good enough. Yeah, one of them. So that was a mistake on my part. A bit of overconfidence. Enemy contact. Nothing we can't handle. Could send down some freedom fighters to soak up the fire. Then hit it with our artillery. Let's see if that works. Normally if you're going to fly in against any AA, you want to sort of mass it. Let's see if we get some kills with this. It'll be pricey. So with the sort of like uh, normal bomber units like these, they just drop the bomb straight on the target. Sort of effective against most units, except the really heavily armoured ones. Um, ready, but that's pretty much what you'd expect. You do get ones which fire missiles, which are more effective against tanks, but less effective against massed enemy units. Enemy it all comes down to taste. We're doing fine here. We'll, we'll probably win this fairly easily. So you can see the score creeps up, and when we reach the top, we win. 3,000 out of 6,000. We are gradually winning. So it's, it's quite interesting. Obviously, you still need to keep your men supplied, never get too overconfident. I don't think we got the artillery in the end, but. Oh, yeah, it's firing again. I think it fired there. You can see the smoke still. He's still on firing back over here. So we did fire at the right place, we just happened not to hit him. They're using it to smoke, which is a questionable decision. So they're sending some helicopters being picked off. You see these guys are all out of ammo, so when the, uh, out of um, supply. So when it goes uh, empty, the yellow bar, you know that they're empty. Uh, they captured one of my supply trucks somewhere. Which is unfortunate. Probably drove through here or something like that. I'm not a great player, but uh, it's just some tips for playing. As you see, infantry in the town, spread of units, try and have that sort of staggered AAA, non radar, radar sort of depth. See, so we've got this anti air here. You can probably pick it off. Should give it a go. So these aren't that good against. Uh, planes. Better against helicopters. I think we should be okay hitting them with the Freedom Fighter. That one didn't fire though. Generally it's a good idea to evac if they don't. In my experience. So we didn't take him out. That's a pity. The Lynx has long range so it can outrange that, that guy's weapons. Should allow us to take it out. Before we can pick off our exposed units. Hopefully anyway. So these bush rangers are out of ammo, so we can take them back to resupply. For some reason they're sending a lot of helicopters at the moment. It is absorbing a lot of our missiles. Which 
is unfortunate. Probably four Nadats now. Or two. See, so they're picking off our units here. So he's destroyed another one of our cargoes here. Something going on. Keeping busy with our freedom fighter. Sending some cargo, so maybe it's out of fuel. Should take one out here, maybe both. So you can see that as we came in, it was across an open field where you could see him, and so you could aim and fire. Sometimes, if there's a hill in the way, you can have a lot of problems. It's important to consider the sort of attack vector where your planes come in. For example, you could fly a plane out here and then in to avoid something or to avoid AA. And some people do that. Sometimes you see planes fly all the way around here and come around the back to hit the enemy if they forget to put any AA at the back. It's another reason why you need to have good recon. So normally on this sort of map, I'd put a recon out well here or, or maybe further out into the water. Just to make sure you don't get outflanked. See, the game is very supply hungry. But, uh... It's reasonably easy as long as you have a good balance of uh, supply units in your deck to keep your men armed. Generally they die at a higher rate than they are. I mean, we haven't lost actually that much. Now planes aren't actually that good at taking down helicopters, so it'll be hard for me to take this out with like Eurofighters reliably. We have the RBS here, which will take it down. So in terms of structuring our defence, what I would do is I'd have Falcons here, for example. Then I'd try and put a tracked rapier, preferably in cover, but if there's no cover, out of cover. Then imagine that this is radar, I'd put radar all the way back here. These two would need supply. And then, if there's any towns, that's where you put your sort of uh, man-based anti-air units. So I'd normally put them nearer the Falcon, I guess. But it's okay, the SAS unit we put in has uh, anti-air as well. But this guy looks like he might cause us some problems, so I'll have to send in that plane anyway. Trouble. And he's gone. Okay. They're sending in a plane. Let's see if any of our anti-air does, does its job. He's dead already. Okay. And then you would move it. So, for example, you take this unit and maybe move it to here, maybe just move it along the hedgerow, because then if target art uh, artillery fire comes in, it won't hit it. Hmm, that's quite close to my command. Going for the challenger, it's worth a lot of points. Where are they firing from this time? Same place, you just can't hit them. So you could infiltrate recon over the top of this, that's quite a common tactic. We could try and place some uh, SAS over on the far side. Oh, we just lost uh, another cargo. Because our ATGM is running out of uh, ammo, is the reason why this is happening. And actually, can't send any more supply. Lucky these guys are ready, so we can select them. So shift clicking will let us select uh, a set of units and order them to supply the front. We more or less won, even if we lost the sectors now, we'd quite easily win. And there we go. So we're fully prepared for whatever uh, helicopter shenanigans they're pulling. Oh, we lost our SAS, SAS unit in the end. It's a pity, did a good job for us. It also means we're running a bit short on recon capable units. So they've got their tanks here, T-34s, oh, that's a good artillery shot there. So you see that sort of thing you'd see, they'd be picked off by some well-placed artillery fire. Still in the same place, but are struggling to hit it. I mean, you'd normally bring more artillery than this and fire them in a, in a group, saturate the area. So yeah, some useful tips, uh, hopefully. See what you make of it. So the advantage of using infantry recon is just that um, recon uh, has good stealth. Our infantry recon have the best stealth. 
because uh, the smaller the unit also the better their stealth like if we look at this uh, SAS might not be a good example because I don't think it's actually recon in this case so if we look at re a recon unit like this you'll see that they have size very small oh. they have size very small and optics very good and because their size is very small it means you can get quite close and even their recon may not be able to spot you obviously they're not as mobile as the helicopter uh, units which can also see further so it's a balance between those use the helicopters to help view the general area and use the infantry recon to try and spot the enemy closer to the front so what people normally do is they infiltrate the special forces recon like deep into this sort of region use that to spot the, for the artillery see what the enemy has target for their attack that's that's a good strategy to get the hang of it takes some work Generally, if you're playing with other people, you can leave it to one of the more experienced players, maybe, to handle that. Or you handle like a basic defense like we've done here to win. Because this was pretty basic. I mean, pretty incomplete. We made a lot of mistakes. Um, but it was enough. Almost won. So normally human players would also move their artillery a lot. Obviously the computer doesn't bother, it seems. Something they could add later. <coughs> wow. Other planes will last a lot, go a lot deeper than that, but they're worth a lot more points. Obviously. I think we lost our, uh, our challenger, which is a bit of a disappointment. Call another Chinook forwards. We've almost won. 600 points isn't that much. Could even try and get the Eurofighter to take out this guy. So the SAS has made it through to here. So on, on, sing on single player you can speed up the game, like so. See, so we can see this enemy uh, helicopter here. Oh, oops. So he's going to die now. That's why you don't fly planes in deep. Well, this one might just get out because it's very good uh, ECM. I think I tend to pick planes with lots of ECM because I often accidentally fly them into the enemy's uh, anti air. Plus, their anti air isn't the best because they're okay. olden days. So, picking off the enemy recon is always a good move. Now, I'll try and sneak the SES to that town. See if we can spot anything. They haven't got great optics. I think they've just got average. Yeah, medium optics, which is okay, because they're not a recon unit, but we use them as if they were. Just because I didn't have any helicopter uh, units I could just fly over here and send over. So this guy's rolling towards us, I think he's run out of fuel again. So it's something you really need to consider is how much fuel your unit has, because if you don't have enough fuel, you try and send it across the whole map, it'll just stall in the middle of nowhere. You have to try and find a way of supplying it, or leave it to die, depending on your taste. I could pick it off more carefully, but just, well, I could have sent the links in. So you can see their command now. So we could risk uh, our aircraft just to kill that command. We'll, we'll just wait until these guys are, uh, are fully healed up. And we'll just order them in. So we'll order two on the Strella, two on the on the command. Well, the way we'll do it is we'll send them out this way. Where do you need them? I think they can fly off the map if I remember correctly. And then you can just loot them in. Sadly, our more expensive ones uh, <laughs> travel a lot faster. Which, you know, might make sense. want them to arrive roughly the same time. I was just estimating there. You can time it all perfectly if you're a more experienced player than I am. Could try to hit that command and those strellas in this move here. Let's see if it works out. Ooh. There we got them. Not too bad, we lost one of the freedom fighters but that's what we sent in as a sacrificial lamb. We managed to take out their command, so they can't bring on aircraft at the moment. We managed to take out a bit of their anti-air as well. 
It's all because we could see what was actually going on thanks to the having a, a unit back behind them. It's generally the trick. I'll try to push through here. They won't make it through like all the way. We'll eventually take them out. Have some towels, I guess. I have loads of points, I'm just not spending them because I'm pretty confident. Obviously something you'd never do against a human player. But we can do. So you can see that I think that's probably their supply trucks and forward operating base. You can destroy a forward operating base. So that's what we're going to do here. So these guys take a very long time to supply because they carry a huge amount of 1000 kilogram bombs which do a lot of damage. Obviously extremely pricey. We just need to destroy probably one more thing so I guess we'll just order, order the, the last attack. The captain and his crew welcome you aboard. There you go. So hints and tips on playing. You can see our unit's got pretty good uh, kills all round. Infantry in a town, extremely effective. Special forces, extremely effective. Lost a few units, but pretty easy. But yeah, same principles apply to multiplayer, but obviously your opponent will be making use of the same ideas. So here we are in Wargame Red Dragon, and I thought I'd do a quick primer for how the skirmish mode works, so people are prepared for when they go into multiplayer. Uh, so you start off with a certain amount of points, which is shared between the number of players. In this case, it's just me versus the computer. So you'll, we have the full amount of points, about 2,000. You always have to have one command uh, out, so you'll never have the full points and if you wanted to swap it to a different command you have to have the points to put the other command down before you delete it so as you watch you see you have a number of points you spend it to take out this unit which is here this is its veterancy this is its cost and this is how many you're, you're taking and how many there are so it's an aslav command a sector which says has a land arrow going onto it and air is a sector where aircraft can, can come on so, for example, if we only had Alpha, we could only bring land units on. We wouldn't be able to bring any of these aircraft on. So, obviously, it's best to try and secure as many sectors as you can, most of the time. So, we're going to send a command to each sector. So, if you have a command static, and the enemy does not have a command uh, in the sector, then you will capture it. Now, it's a game where you need a balance of units. So... For example, infantry are very effective in these town regions, but very ineffective in a field. And you can have a variety of different... So, it's important in this game to have supply, and the forward operating base provides you with the largest quantity of supply. I think for points it is the best. Uh, and obviously it's static, however, so you need something to ferry the supply, or you need to take the thing which needs supply back to it. This is just a land map, so this is just going to be a discussion of the normal land tactics. I'll do a naval one afterwards, I think. So. You can see there's a series of sectors and they're given different values. So a plus four sector is worth four times as much as the plus one sector in terms of command, roughly speaking. And uh, as you can see there's also these arrows. So land is where land units can come on. So you can bring on land units anywhere you control left and uh, selecting them. Wait a second. Command here, command here. Command here. Don't need this command. Okay. So, fusiliers. Oh. I'm out of them. So I guess I have to put some Royal Marines on after all. Okay. So, you've also got your tanks, which provide the muscle for your force. Uh, and they're more effective if you can conceal them or if you have a very large force trying to force its way through to the enemy. Right, so, we have the special forces who we can send ahead so that's what we will do and quite often you'll see this people fly special forces forward if they don't fly an entire force forward in this deck I don't have loads of aircraft loads of helicopter units so I can't just fly them in so we have some anti-air some anti-tank missile and then just some standard infantry as a rule of thumb it's actually better to bring the elite infantry than it is to bring this regular infantry but because this is a skirmish with the AI that won't be a problem so we'll do the same with the other one.
as you can see, I can put down several in a row by holding down shift.